Okay, so this is the house that we're starting to use Revit to put together. And um, I sent you all the photos of the actual house. And I walked through step by step how to get it in there as kind of a design drawing without any specific dimensions. And a few students asked for specific dimensions. So here are a few that might help you out. Um, I've got 34 across from out to out and 31 here with four feet and the rooms are 11 by 12, these bedrooms. So you can fill in the rest there with the video that kind of walked you through how to how to draw this step by step. Um, just a couple of things in mind. When you're placing the dimensions, and this is this is for I think a review because I think I've mentioned this before, but you can go to annotate and pick aligned. And then when you get close to the wall, it's going to go to the center because that's the default. If you just rest your pointer there and press and let go of your tab key, then you'll have access to bringing this dimension to either the outside or the inside. And then you click, right? So over here, it's going to go back to the center, press my tab key and let go and then click and then pull my mouse out here and click. So now let's say that you've placed that dimension and um, there are a couple things. What if you want the, this dimension to be a little bit bigger? Depending on which wall you want to change, you can escape out of that to get out of placing dimensions or pick the modify button up there that kind of cancels you out. And then click on this wall here and it'll give you the number is blue right there for the dimension. If I wanted this to be 17 feet, I could just type in 17 and enter. And then I'm going to click in space there. And that's that's kind of how you um, place it. Whether yours is 17 or not, that's it's okay. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and watch the other video, which goes through step-by-step step how to bring all of this in. But, um, you know, throw a couple dimensions on there. You're working on your portfolio. You're working on learning learning this and uh, now we can start to put the room names so over in the architecture tab we can pick the room icon right there and pull your mouse in in here in the room and then click and now I'm going to pick the modify button here I, normally I would put it in all the rooms but what the other thing I did was I changed the scale at the bottom left instead of using an eighth inch or a quarter inch I think we had it as so that it would fit on that sheet of paper I changed it to an eighth inch right here. And um, in this view, it kind of looks, it looks good with that eighth inch. So we'll have to take a look when we go back on the, on the sheet, whether it fits at that um, scale or not. So click right on here, that room uh, tag, and then click on edit type over in properties. You can take the check mark out of show room number right there and then pick apply and pick OK. See, now we're only showing the room. And if you click on the room there and you put your cap locks on, you can call this living room and click in space. So here, this is how you put your room names in there. I'm going to go ahead and click on room. Come over here, you'll see it lines up. I can click, click, click in all these different um, places here. And this one's going to say that there are two rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and pick OK. And so we can have these two rooms, but there's no clear definition on where one starts and one stops. And so if we're looking at square footage or, or other things in the future, we might want to put this room separator in it. The room separator is next to the room icon there. And you just go ahead and click on room separator. And it's basically a line to show you where um, the room separates. and because there is a transition here of material, the carpet starts where the ceramic tile stops. I'm going to click here, come across and click here. And now that room is more defined. When I click on it, you see it's that one room and it's not both of them. So now I can go back and change these. If I click on it and then click on here, I can call this one uh, bedroom. And you could even go like, if you can't fit it in, it, I've used 
bed in an R RM, but it looks like we can fit that in. Uh, bedroom two, maybe. Maybe this is bedroom one. So you can have like different numbers for it. And so I can see that already this, uh, it's gonna be smaller for the utility room, kitchen. And there's also a sunroom. So let, let me see if I can get this in here. Uh, we'll have to put a separator in there too. And there is a difference right there in material. Yeah, see that? Okay. So a couple more rooms here. Let's go ahead and put a room separator here between the two, which does have um, a difference in material as well. And then this one is the sunroom. Okay, so I put the bath and utility in the sunroom. And you, when you click on these, you can use the arrow keys to move them around if you want. And now we can um, go take a look at other things. Uh, if we go to the 3D view, you'll see that I, I did um, put the roof plan on here for the other project. I had two going, and this is the one that I'm using for the video. So um, the roof will look like this, and it's part of what we're going to do today. I'll also take a few minutes to, to put the deck on, although that was last week, last week's assignment. Um, I showed you how to put the deck on with a different um, house, but using the photos, you were to put the deck on this one. So let's get started with the roof, and then I'll finish up with the deck. So normally we would be able to use this um, roof by footprint and go around the whole building when you have walls like this, even the small wall that you can, you can establish as being sloped. But over here on this side, there's, it's a transition, right? From, from this lower roof to a higher one and down. And so the roof by footprint doesn't work as well because there's no place to really say to slope this up right there. So plus it'll give you guys um, you know, some practice with another way of working with roofs, which was part of the roof, um, the roof lecture presentation when we talked about roofs. It's I'll just show you ahead of time. It's over in the modify um, tab. And it's called Roof Unjoin, Join Unjoin Roof. And if you watch the little video there, you create these roofs independently, and then you extend a piece of the roof to the other roof. So you watch this again. So this is a separate roof that's going to be extended to another roof. And by doing that, you can create multiple um, variations of different roofs. And then, and then later on, if we wanted to, we could join the geometry to over here, and this is a different join, to show the valleys if they're not showing. In this one, I don't think I had to use it in order for it to show, but, um, but we'll take a look. If you, if you look at what I'm talking about is that this is a completely separate roof and these two are created so that they kind of dive into or, or come into this one. I had to change some, some roof slopes as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and delete this whole thing because um, it's going to be in my way to showing you this. And let's go ahead to the level two. If we go to the level two view, on mine I can see the level one. If you can't see the level one, because maybe we didn't establish this, over under underlay, where it says range base level, change that to first floor plan. I think we did that before, but if not, uh, change it to first floor plan and pick apply. And that would be if you didn't see the first floor plan. Underlay, underlay will help you to see the other views when you're in um, a different level. So let's go over to the architecture tab and we'll go to roof by footprint. Now, like I said, we're going to do each one of these individually. So um, the default right here is to pick walls. So I'm going to, 
And I, I know there's a check mark in define slope and there's an overhang of one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one in here for the overhang. And um, because we know that this side, we're gonna do the main one first. This side is going to be sloped. So I'm going to make sure that it's defined slope right here and here. But I'm gonna take the check mark out to click on this side and this side. Now I need to create kind of some closure with these boundaries in the, um, the ribbon there. There's a tool here just above the word modify there called trim extend corner. So I'm gonna click on the two parts that I wanna keep of these lines, these purple lines that make up the roof. So this is what I wanna end up with, just like this. A purple box that goes around that main roof the left and the right side have um, the triangles, which mean they're going to slope up. And the ends, the gable ends, will not have a triangle. Plus, uh, I don't think, we don't want to really use a 12-inch 12 12-inch 12 um, roof. We want to use something smaller so that we can put a fascia board on it. 12 is pretty big. So, um I'm not sure if I created this uh, generic nine inch or if it was already there, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and create another one. In fact, let's create together a generic eight inch, let's say. So with this generic 12 inch, pick um, edit type, pick duplicate, because what we're doing is we're creating another roof type. And let's make this eight inch. So we're just gonna say eight, generic eight. Or if you wanna go ahead and put eight inch, we're just giving it a name and then pick okay. Now we're going to go into where it says structure, click on edit, and then here's the thickness. You just wanna change that. Make sure you type in eight inches. If you just type in eight, it'll be eight feet. We don't want that. Okay, so um, we can put material on it as well as we start to, to look at rendering. There are a lot of roof shingles and things that you can put on here. Let's go ahead and pick okay. And okay again. Um, we'll probably end up changing the slope, but we can do that afterwards when we take a look at it. Let's go ahead and pick the green check mark. Now, in this view, it's cut off because these are like um, slices of the levels and they have a different view range. So let's go to the 3D view and take a look. Not bad. Might be a little high, but we'll we'll work with it. So before we start. Um, bringing our walls up. Let's go back to the level two and click in space and let's do a second and a third roof and then we'll join them together. So here we're going to go up to roof by footprint. I'm in the second level. Same kind of thing. We're still using the generic eight inch um, except for this end is the gable right here. So there's no slope. But I'm gonna put the check mark in define slope so I can get this side and this side because these two sides are going to slope up and this one's not. And then this last one is really um, going to be just a regular line because like I said, we're gonna join it to the other one. So let's just um, in the roof sketch mode under draw, I'm gonna click on line. And then somewhere in here, I'm gonna click pull my mouse down and click. And I do have the triangle there, so I don't need that. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. And then I'm gonna make sure I click on that line right there that has a little triangle and take the check mark out of define slope so that that one is also without a slope. Now I can clean up my corners, clicking this trim extend. Make sure you click on the part of the purple line that you wanna keep in order to close off that boundary. So this is what we're ending up with. We're ending up with two sides that are sloping and this gable end with this one line here that's not, um, not sloping. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the green check mark. Go to the 3D view to check it out. There it is. Now, you see how high it is? I'm using my shift key. I'm holding my shift key down and holding the wheel of my mouse and moving the mouse to get 
get this around like orbit to orbit. Um, that's way too too high, so we're going to change the slope. So because we have it selected, we can come over here and change the slope where it says slope 912. Let's try 4, although that's pretty low. Yeah, let's try 6. So 612, still kind of high, right? It's not going to really go in there really good. So let's go back to 4, although 4 is pretty low. Let's do it. Okay. Um, it looks like it'll probably though um, be able to go into that one. So let's let's try it. Back over here under modify. Make sure you get a view like this where you can get a, get a, uh, a good um, be able to click on this edge and be able to click on this face. So under modify over here, I'm going to click on this um, join unjoin roof. I'm going to select select this back line and then make sure it's this roof face. You see how it kind of like goes back? Now it already, I can already see that there's a little bit of issues right here. We're probably gonna have to bring that down lower or the other one up higher. So maybe we could click on it and use our, um, base offset from level right there. And let's just see what six inches does there. Oops, should be minus, minus six inches. We're just bringing it down. Mm, not bad. This is the this is the issue that we the is, these are the issues that we kind of face when we start to have a lot of different roof slopes going on. Um, I think I'm going to go with a minus four inches. Yeah, you see how it's starting to line up a little bit there? So I clicked on this roof right here and I changed the base offset from level to a negative four inches just to bring it down so this is kind of in line a little bit more. We're gonna throw a fascia board on there so it'll kind of keep covered up. We'll see the other side looks pretty good. Not bad. Okay, let's go over to the other side here. We have this piece that's sticking out. We'll go to level two. And same thing, guys, we're going to go over to architecture and roof by footprint. And um, we still have the check mark in define slope. And we know that this top part is going to be sloped, and so is this bottom part. But now I'm going to take the check mark out of define slope and click on this one so that I have a gable end on the side. And now I'm going to draw a line. So click on line under draw there, draw a line from here to here. It doesn't matter where the line is. We're just kind of creating a piece of the roof. But more importantly is this, we have to have this as a boundary. So we're going to click on trim extend corner and go from the top to here. And we already have that one. Click on here and here. See, we have like a box there, right? We have a, a rectangle that's showing that the two ends are sloping. And these two are straight. I'll pick the green check mark and then go to the 3D view. Um, looking good, looking pretty good there, I think. Um, we'll have to take a look at how it extends over there. Same idea. We're going to click on the modify tab, go to join, unjoin roof, click on the edge of this smaller roof, and click on the face of the bigger one. Now, that one's going right into it. We'll have to take a look. Oh, maybe that's how the photo is looking. Um, you know, it looks pretty good to me, uh, and I, I'm okay with that. If you wanted to look at the photo and get it to be more exact, you can change the um, the slope. But um, I think that, that looks good for our, um, for our roof. And now we can extend the walls. Now, we can... Um, we can click on one wall at a time, or if you put your, if you just rest your pointer on one of these walls and you press on that go of the tab key, it automatically finds the other walls that are kind of in line with it, and then you can click. And now let's just see what happens when I pick attach and then click on this roof. Um.
it's giving me an error, but I think it's because I did all the walls. So I'm going to cancel out of that. I just wanted to show you that, but I, but in this case, we won't be able to use it. Let's click on this end wall and pick attach top base and then click on that wall. See, it just wanted me to do each one. <laughs> so I'm going to click on this one, attach to that roof because they are separate roofs. Uh, and then click on this one, attach to this roof. So I'm going around to each one. Click on this wall, attach top base, and click on the wall, the roof. So now we have all the roofs. Now, when you see something like this, you see that little little um, notch right there? Yeah, that's from part of this wall not not extending to the um, the other roof. So let's just see what, we, what happens when I click on this, attach it to this roof. Yeah, that's good. See, it'll take that little um, piece out of there. I had to attach the wall to that roof, then attach the wall to that roof. And let's see if I have that on other, on other corners. No, nope, looking pretty good. Sometimes it happens automatically. Oh, there's another one right there. So I'm going to click on this wall, attach it to that roof. Awesome. Okay, there's our roof. So let's put the fascia board on there to kind of like uh, give it that um, that closure at the ends. But especially if you put a material on the roof like shingles, the whole roof is going to be all that color, including the ends. Um, if you wanted to go in and, and add another layer to the roof, then it would just be a layer of um, of that material. But what normally I do is um, I make the roof a different material, and then uh, we're going to need a fascia board anyway. So let's go up to uh, roof and then down to fascia, roof fascia. And it looks like the default is 1 by 12, which could actually work for us. We're going to click on the top edge of this um, this roof at the end and see how it kind of like just adds a board at the end and it'll be nice and um, white I think it's white by default so I'm going to go ahead and um, put it all the way around even at the at the ends there and it, it does look like it's um, creating it all the way inside of it we're going to join those to make that look better uh, now you want to be careful you don't put two of them on there because I believe it will will actually let that happen. But it should look pretty good, uh, especially when you get your when you get your um, roof material on there. Okay. Now there are a couple of areas here where we may have to um, clean it up a little bit. Like this is not connecting, so we'll have to make the facial board smaller or um, even if we join these this is gonna kind of come down a little bit there but this one's looking okay yeah there's there's a little bit of there are a little bit of um, you know corners that we'd have to go back in and clean up but right now I'm more concerned about you guys having your your roof on there get your fascia board on there um, some people are behind and we really need to keep moving moving forward okay let's take a look So some of you may have already put the deck on, but I'll just go through a streamline of, of putting it on here and you can verify it. Um, you'll have to go back and take a look at the photos possibly. I'm doing it based on um, knowing the house. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the first floor plan and over here there's a deck. So we want to put a floor. So we're going to go over to architecture and go to floor architectural. Now this floor can be um, set up already with material or can just be generic. I'm going to go ahead under the draw panel and click on rectangle. Rectangle. Because I kind of know that the deck goes, I don't know, from about here to here. And maybe it's three feet, four feet. Let's make it four feet around that. And the closer you get, the more exact you can get for these. And honestly, we should change the units because it's 64. 
But um, yeah, go ahead and create a rectangle here. And then I'm just going to click right in this number and type in four and enter. And that'll help you to get the four feet. So something else that you might wonder about are these two lines here. I'm going to cancel out of that. Um, I'm still in the sketch mode for the floor. I think we may have um, looked at this when we did the floor itself. Or did we put a floor in here? This is a good question. <laughs> uh, we'll have to go back and take a look at that. You see these double lines right here? That's really uh, establishing the span direction. And that would be if you are creating something that's a little more detailed. Um, the span direction wouldn't be the long ways, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on span direction and then click on the short line here. The span direction would be this way, short um, length. In this case, we just have kind of a design box for our deck, but if we had members that were underneath this, we would, we would need to use that. All right, and we don't have yet the material established, but we're creating a deck. Let's go ahead and pick the green check mark. There's the first one on this side. And then there's another one on this side that goes, let's go up to floor and architecture and pick the rectangle. It goes, um, it goes back a little ways because we have the stairs like uh, around here. <laughs> and then over here someplace, right about there, right? And it's already four feet, so that's good. If it wasn't, you could go ahead and um, change that. It doesn't matter about the span direction. I'm going to go ahead and pick the green check mark. So now we have our two decks. We really need to go over to one of the elevations so that I just went to the east elevation so that we can create another um, another level for the stairs. So we'll go ahead and go up to level in the architecture tab at the top left or top right. And um, let's just say that we have, actually we have um, only a few steps, like two steps. So I'm thinking it's two feet and it's only going to be like three steps. So two feet, I'll pull my mouse across and click. You might not even use this one. I only needed this so that I can place my step, my stairs. So now we can go um, back over to level three, which is like the bottom level. And we really should rename that, right? Let's go over to this east direction again. We, sh we should try to rename all of these levels. So this should be, you know, like bottom of um, stairs. Yes, bottom of stairs because we don't have any other stairs here. Now, guys, if this bothers you to have it like overlapping because we're probably going to turn it off when we set it up. There is this little um, zigzag right here inside the level line. See when I click on it, it gives me the, the option to kind of like drag these little um, grips. Now we can go over to the bottom of the stairs. At this point, we're ready to create the stairs. So we'll go to stair and over in the properties, just make sure that the, the base level is the bottom of the stair and the top level is the first floor plan, right? So we have a couple of them. We'll just create them out in space. I'm going to click in space and, and, and then pull my mouse all the way past the stairs and click. And then um, pick the green check mark. And you can see that that's like going down. And at this point, as long as I select the whole thing, I can just drag it right into place right here. I can even use my um, my arrow keys to bring it right to the edge. 
So I used my arrow keys to bring it to the edge where this side is kind of lined up with the deck, which is four feet. And these are by default three feet. And there's some constraints over here in properties based on um, established codes. But if I double click, double click on the stair itself, it brings you into the stair so you can edit it. And now if I click on the stairs, I'll have these little arrows. I can use to hold my left mouse button down on this like arrow and bring it to the edge. It's okay if it's three foot seven something or other. It looks better. It's in place and it has the rail with the um with the stair. Honestly, I don't think this rail is even in the in the um in the stair. No. So while we're in here. Take out, like select that rail and take that one out and then just pull this right to the house. It wants to go all the way in, but we don't, we want it to go like right about there. All right, now we can pick the green check mark. We've got our stairs there. We can go over to the 3D view and check it out. Oh, it did not update. Hmm. Oh, I took out the stringer and not the um, stair. So here, I'm just going to take that rail out. But why didn't it go all the way? Let's just double click on it and see why. Oh, it did. It did. It's just underneath it. Okay, cool. I'm going to click on the green check mark. Um, we didn't put a floor in the regular house. I'm going to have to go back and help you with that as well. I, I didn't get to that part, but it's okay. We're on the stairs and we decided here to, um, take out the stringer and, and the rail on this side because it's up against the house. Um, but to finish this side, we have to put a rail and another stair. Right, so I'm gonna go to the bottom of the stairs again, come over here and put one on this side. So a stair, um, I'm gonna go ahead and and click, pull my mouse across and click and pick the green check mark. There's my stair. We'll get back, you know, you get better and better at this as you keep going on it. Use your arrow keys to kind of like Put it in place. And the closer you are, the the more exact um, the arrow keys kind of bring you to it. And then you could even change it when you're in the 3D um, mode. Here, I'm going to do the same thing because that's the way it is. If you double click on it, this was the stringer. You can even see stringer. I, I took that out. We'll have to bring the take the rail out uh, after. So click on the stair and use this little arrow to bring the stair over to the house. Now we can pick the green check mark. It, since we're here, we'll go back and take that rail off. But since we're here, let's put a rail here. So we're going to pick on rail. And you, um, at this point, can just use the line right here under draw to draw a line or... Like you can, um, there are a lot of different things you can do here, depending on what you need. So you can either draw the rail or you can pick lines. So if I pick lines, for instance, it's going to click on the edge of the, of the, um, the deck, but I'll still have to pull it down to be in line with these, um, these rails. So I want to get close enough to try to get to the midpoint of that rail. Come over to this one and get close enough to to get right there on that one let's see what happens there make the green check mark it should be the same one let's go to the 3d view and um yeah <laughs> i was on the wrong uh, i was on the wrong level but i'm kind of glad i want to show you this because you can click on it and you see i was on the bottom of the stairs when i put the rail in but in the properties i could just push it up to the first floor and pick apply and now it's now it's there so 
Um, next time we put the rail on, we'll make sure we're on the first floor plan. But even if you're not, you can go over to properties and and set it up to be where it needs to go. Now there's no rail here, so I'm going to click on the rail and delete it. There's the deck on the on the other the left side. Oh, that's right. We didn't even put a floor in this one yet. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing over here. We have um, the same thing on both sides, really. So we'll go to the bottom of the stairs. We come over here. Each one is a different stair. So I've got one here. I have to pick the green check mark. And then I've got another one here. Green check mark. I can um, move these in place. Careful that you're selecting the whole thing. I'm Pretty sure this one only has like this. This house definitely needs to be redesigned. Uh, there's a lot in it that um, you know plans for improvement. Um, like I said, I've only been in it for a couple of weeks. I, I've owned it for about a month, but I was living somewhere else, actually in Oxford. Um, very nice house too, but I like to be on the lake. So here I am. So here it is. Uh, and we're going to double click because I don't think either one has a stringer on it on this side. It's just kind of like open. I know not the best. I'm going to right click and pick delete or you can pick delete on the keep on the um, keyboard. Double click. I, I honestly don't think there's a stringer on this side either. So I'm going to delete that. Now, um, let's go to level one, first floor plan, and put our rail in, right? So making sure we're on the first floor plan, we're going to draw the rail from close enough. I'll get this midpoint. We'll go all the way over here to this one. And that should work. Let's see. I need to take those rails off. I don't think I'm going to the 3D view. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think there's a rail. Oh, yeah, there is a rail here, but not here. So I'm going to take this one off. Actually, just for consistency, let's take that one off, too. Wait, what happened to my door? <laughs> is that an actual door? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. What? Did you see how it looked like? Well, it was just the view. That's right. I was looking at an angle. All right. So there's the deck. Let's go back inside and put the, the, the floor. We can go to the first floor plan. And, um, you know, some people will put a floor around the whole outside, right? The whole thing. And then use that um, tool that we used in the walls. The walls. Um, presentation this one called um, split split face so we can split the face of the floor and then the uh, and create the rooms right with this different face and then underneath here paint it with the carpet or the tile when we start to render and get into you know, materials just want to talk to you about it that ahead of time. Ahead of, ahead of time. Um, but I have seen people create several different floors that are kind of based on being underneath the walls. Maybe because they're not aware of the split face. Not sure. But for what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and put a floor around the whole thing. And, um, and that'll make it a lot better for us. It'll look like there's a foundation as well. So we'll go to the architecture tab and go to floor here architecture floor and what we're doing is um, we're picking walls but we're picking the outside of the wall so we're picking all the outside of, of all these walls so make sure that you're picking the outside line of all these walls now normally it will connect the lines as long as there's not anything too out of the ordinary so we don't have to use this trim extend to kind of clean up the corners so we should be able to pick the green check mark there's my floor and now when i go to the 3d view my my floor is 
you know, in place and it kind of lines up with the deck, deck floor. And in this case, it kind of looks like the crawl space because there is no basement, um, you know, on this one. All right. That is what I have for today. We put the roof on and we put the deck, the two decks. We looked at um, adding the floor and we also put, you know, our room names and got our dimensions in place. Okay, a uh, couple more weeks of uh, classes will start to transition into um, the rest of this project. And then I'll take a look at what else we might need to wrap up the semester with. Good job, guys.